July 7th, both in 1990 and 1991, popularly termed as Saba Saba, were the game changers in Kenya's political landscape whose struggle that many termed the second liberation would see Kenya transition from a de facto one-party state into a multi-party democracy. A struggle that came with a heavy price for some. 27 years ago, in 1990, political leaders opposed to the then ruling party Kanu and who were perceived as progressive began their push for the return of multi-party politics in Kenya. Their first attempt was July 1990, which backfired. A year later, in 1991, on 7th July, popularly known as Saba Saba, they began their second attempt that would turn out to be final come November the same year. Some paid with a heavy price, but that is the story of multi-party heroes in Kenya on this week's edition, KTN's Untold Story. My name is Duncan Haimba. Nineteen ninety will go down in the annals of history for Kenya as the year when progressive forces in Kenyan politics then joined forces for a united cause whose ultimate mission was pushing for multipartism in Kenya. For years these images remaining reminders of the second liberation struggle in Kenya, which began on july seventh, nineteen ninety, and later on the same date. July 7th, 1991, and finally November the same year. They made Kano big head because they could dictate anything. Kano youth wing were even taxing, taking deals from motor cars. In Machakos, for example, Mulubotesia was a king there. He had his own Kano youth blocking the road, and then you pay taxes for Kano. Then firebrand politicians, the late Pius Masinde Muliro, the late Adonija Ajuma Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Kenneth Njindo Matiba, Charles Wanyoike Rubia, the late Ahmed Bamariz, the late Martin Shikuku, together with the young tax, now senior councils Paul Mwite, Gibson Kamaukuria, and James Orengo, John Haminwa, Reverend Timothy Njoya, among others, were the ring leaders of the return multi-party movement. First of all, the constitution dictated that to be a member of parliament, you've got to belong to a political party. Times were hard politically, and they knew something had to be done and done fast. The environment was so repressive. Social places were flooded uh, with uh, special branch spies, you know, and, and, and ask around then you will be told by many people that in those days if you went to a bar on a Friday evening, men's uh, night out, and you took one too many and you mentioned the name more, you became sober immediately. The regime was feared then to appear even to criticize the government or Kanu for that matter, was really very dangerous. But a few of us decided to do something about it. And for I, as Charles Rubia, got in touch with one or two people who were willing to come out. And uh, one of them was actually Jaramogi. Ogiko Dinga, Raila's father. Raila's father was not in parliament then, but he was a very strong opposition leader. Uh, Jaramogi had actually uh, convened us to a meeting and said the time is ripe. And we said, how do we go about this? And uh, we wanted to declare uh, the existence of a, a party, a political party. Uh, and um, in, our, in, our, in our discussions, one of the things that uh, we decided was that uh, because the state at that time was, was very lethal, 
um, people have died uh, in the course. We said we have to look for people who had a history in Kenya's politics from 1963 or before to join up with Jaramogi. When I came out and I really got treatment, as I have described from Kalu, I felt very bitter. And I decided that whatever happens, I must go on. I had just come from my uh, second detention. And uh, Mr. Um, Kenneth Matiba and Charles Rubia had more or less been expelled from, from Khan, or, or they had resigned. Uh, and first, uh, they had uh, made a statement in which they were calling for uh, uh, repeal of Section 2A uh, to uh, allow for uh, formation of other political parties. One day, about 89, or nearly 90, I can't remember the time, Ken Matiba met me in the street somewhere in Nairobi, <coughs> what was a better street, walking. And uh, then he said, all this noise, because Matiba was also making noise, but what are we going to do? I said, we should do something. I told him I have met Jaramogi severally, <laughs> and I think we should get together. That is when Ken told me he too had me meeting with Muite. <laughs> Those days, you, you say something in Parliament, and uh, the same day or the next day, you are called by the special branch. What did you mean, you know? It was very difficult circumstances for people who were practicing the kind of politics we were doing. Uh, yeah, 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 I lost my seat. Then I kept out of, um, uh, of uh, elective politics until 1990, uh, the elections of 1992. Uh, in between, in fact, we had a debate with Jaramogi. He was saying, oh, we better go, you better go back to Parliament. And, and I pleaded with him that, you know, I, I don't see anything that we, we can achieve in Parliament. We, we're better off struggling from outside. Earlier in that year, February 1990, tragedy had struck the country, sending political shockwaves and panic all over. Robert Ouko was murdered. And uh, the country was very tense. And everybody in hot politics feared for their lives. Because Robert Uko is a man I knew, he was my Bunge colleague. And if there was anybody who was praising Moi every minute, it was Robert Uko. <laughs> and if they could kill him, so we all feared for our lives. Then Ken and I and uh, Moite started meeting on a Sunday morning when everybody is going to church. For example, Bishop Gitari, we used to drive with Professor Nyang Yong, again leaving Nairobi at 1 a.m. to drive all the way to Kisumu to go and have a meeting with him before daybreak. daybreak. It is not the churches as institutions. What happened was that individual church people, and it wasn't ju just uh, Dr. Timothy Joya, he was one of them, he was one of the earliest ones to come out very clearly. But Bishop Gitari, later the Archbishop Gitari of the Anglican Church, Okulu, Bishop Okulu, and um, Bishop Wanazeki, particularly when he was the Bishop of the Diocese of Nako, those are the people we worked with. I was defrocked again from the church for two years. Then what happened? I returned and preached the same sermon in January. I was reinstated by public demand. On January 1, I preached the same sermon. Yes. And they went recruited, asking, I recruited Matifa and Ogiga to join the Motor Party. You can see pictures. To join the Motor Party. Because Moy said, my sermon was subversive, and you know by 
uh, uh, by public order at 1970, uh, subversion was treason. In the church, Catholic, we had Wananziki. Okay, yeah, Wananziki. In the FCK part, we had Manasseh Kuria, the, the bishop, the archbishop. And uh, in the PCA, people in Joya was very active. In fact, one of the reasons why I was picked as MP and detained early, what I said earlier, because they came in the court of my office in Nairobi, they found nothing except someone delivered by Njoya. Because <laughs> they had fought Joya for every someone he had to submit a report to police. Plans for a big rally at the historic Kam Kunji on 7th July 1990, dubbed Saba Saba, were made that would see opposition supporters across the country gather in the capital for the historic rally. Initially we went to court seeking registration, the court refused. Then we said we are going to go to the people and say the time had come, with or without a license. And the mantra was that that year was a year of multi-party <laughs> democracy. We said we would apply for a permit to hold a public line in Kamukochi. They decided on our group, well, let's call a meeting. You may be aware that you could have a meeting without a permit, a license from government, to give you a license to have a rally in which you fill a form and you indicate the speakers, you, spe you indicate the agenda, and you, you certify that you'll be responsible for the security. Sweden, Germany, and the US embassies started working with the radical politicians. US envoy Smith Hempston was singled out. Then, then President Daniel Toroitich Arap Moy was quick to warn the country that the international community was behind the push for multipartism in Kenya. Shida is zote ni kuhusa inji kufanya nini kama pesa zili mumuisa yesu mwana wa mungu. Wee binadamu ni nini? There was a lot of condemnation of the two. Uh, that they were traitors, they were ethnic chauvinists, they were uh, people who wanted to take the Kenya back uh, to colonial days, and like all those kind of outrageous um, allegations. Coming up after the break. <laughs> and they have refused for us to say, Professor Wangari, where are you going now? Some of us escaped very narrowly, but we decided to continue with the struggle. And that's why we said we would go to Kamukoji again. Mm -hmm.